Good morning. Welcome to worship. Let us take a few moments to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have loved us and have always been faithful. Lord Jesus, you have conquered sin, death, and the power of the devil. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Holy Spirit, through you we have been called enlightened sanctified and kept in the true faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us take a few moments of silence to profess our sins. Our Heavenly Father sent his Son, Jesus Christ, that through faith in him we might know his forgiveness. To all those who repent and believe in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to worship. Today we are celebrating the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. We provide this broadcast for all of those who are unable to attend. And um, some of these announcements are uh, dedicated to you at home. Uh, one of them is that we have the Harvest Bazaar coming up on, um, and this is unpracticed, but what day is it on? November... Fourth, November 4th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, we're featuring our famous lefsa. They've been baking lefsa and baking lefsa, and it's being rolled out, and it's, it will, there will be enough for everyone, but come early. Uh, there will be baked goods, all homemade craft items, cherished treasures, and a silent auction. Also, uh, there will be a lunch of caramel rolls served um, and a meal along with that. And then there is a new Bible study that started October 5th, but um, there's still books available. It's on The Forgotten God by Francis Chan, and um, people are definitely welcome to join in late. Um, you won't be counted late. Soup Sandwich and Scripture continues. This last Friday, we had a lively discussion about um, election and predestination. All men are invited. They're, it's at Friday at noon. Um, so the Pasta Palooza is a week from today. It's to benefit Halos, and it's put on by our Illuminate Youth Group here. Um, uh, you'll see Dennis out there um, selling tickets. You do not have to pay for your tickets until you come on Sunday, but if you could just reserve them, that would be great. Um, that way we have a head count for next weekend. And um, we also have takeout op options. So just let us know if you're coming so that we, because we have a lot of people coming from outside of this church too. So we want to make sure we get you all in there and get you fed and all that good stuff. Um, four to six o'clock, we'll be serving food. Six oh five-ish, we'll start the um, heads or tails auction that we're doing. And then 6.30 is a candlelight service. So um, if you want to just come for the candlelighting, that's fine. You can come in for that too. So, The first reading is from Isaiah 5 to 1. A reading from Isaiah. Let me sing the long, a song. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it 
and he weeded out a vineyard and he hewed out a vine a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah judged between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do with my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed. It shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, and uh, Philippi was actually kind of a uh, retirement community for Roman military, and uh, he was actually writing them to thank him for uh, helping him out while he was in prison, but he took the opportunity to do a little evangelizing as well. Uh, this is Paul's personal testimony and should be a model for all Christians uh, starts with Paul's pedigree and ends with uh, Paul speaking of his confidence in Christ and all this not by Paul claiming to know Christ, but by Christ claiming Paul. Philippians chapter 3. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, blameless under the law. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of, of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, then I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in <coughs> Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Feel the gentle breeze 
According to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. And when the harvest time came, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves, beat one, and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. And finally, he sent his son, saying to them, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. And so they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. And when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do with those tenants? And they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the, the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. 
and they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, um, has anybody ever had tenants? I've had tenants. It's not always easy, is it? Um, I had some tenants. I said, you know, after three months, I said, you have to pay me something. (laughs) I'm a lousy businessman. And so I ended up trying to counsel them. Well, it doesn't work either, you know? (laughs) But, um, you know, I, and often when I'm preaching, sometimes I'll, I'll look out and I'll, I'll uh, say something or I, uh, somebody else is preaching and all of a sudden I hear I, or I see somebody nudge another person and say, listen, <laughs> listen up, right? And, um, and the truth is uh, they probably have to listen up. I don't know, you know, but uh, it's kind of funny, but often that the other person, it should be for us, you know? We have to listen up. We're the ones that it's all about. It's about the relationship that we have with God, you know. Now, that's the funny thing about relationships. You get, you get uh, married, you have a son, you know, well, you know what it's like. You have kids, and then all of a sudden what happens? Everything revolves around the kids, right? So you have to take them here and there. You have to make sure they have everything. You, have to, you don't even get time with the one that you you fell in love with at first, you know? And so it's so important to nurture that relationship and make sure that you're, you're there for the other person and growing in that relationship throughout your whole life. That means when the kids go to bed, they go to bed. And, well, sometimes it takes a little while, but then you have to spend a little time with the one that you love so much, with your wife or your spouse, it's about relationship, and that's what actually Isaiah is, is telling the people. He's saying it's about relationship. Let's talk about God and his love song to, concerning his vineyard. He had a fertile hill, and on the hill he dug it. He cleared it of stones. He, he uh, planted the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and a wine vat in it, and it didn't yield grapes, what he planted, it yielded wild grapes. And so he, he said that I'm, I'm going to um, take down the hedge. I'm going to let it be devoured. I'm going to take down its wall. I'm going to let it be trampled. The vineyard is, is of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the people of Judah are his pleasant plantings. He expected justice but saw bloodshed. Righteousness but heard a cry. They didn't relate to one another the way that God wanted them to relate to each other. They uh, took advantage of one another. And, and so Isaiah is calling out to them as a people, follow the Lord. It's about relationship. That's exactly what uh, Jesus is doing now in, in the, the gospel for today, in the parable that he tells. When he starts telling this parable, all the Pharisees and the, and the um, chief priests know exactly what he's talking about, Isaiah 5. And it rings in their ears. But when uh, the tenants, and, and so he talks about the same image, and yet he sends for the produce, and, and they kill one, they stone another. He sends more servants, and they do the same. And he's telling them that you have done this to the prophets, and so he's going to send his son. But they don't know that it's Jesus that's standing before them. And they'll kill him. Because they don't understand. They want the vineyard for themselves. They want what uh, God has given them for themselves. They'll make their own rules. They'll make their um, own own understanding of, of the way that it should work. It should suit their needs. But God says, I have something else in plan, in mind. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. The kingdom of God will be taken away from him and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one on whom the the stone falls will be broken to pieces. And it will crush anyone on whom it falls. And so, it's a tough reading. It's very difficult to look at it and not say, well, what about the other guy, you know? And yet, in the scripture, we're the other guy. 
I um, had, a, had a funeral some time ago. I won't tell you when it was, but it was some time ago. And I went to the funeral, and we had the reception first. It was a celebration of their life, and everything was going beautifully. And I was there for maybe a, a half an hour, an hour, and then um, someone said, does anybody have a Nissan? And I thought, well, yeah, probably lots of people. No, it was all Fords and Chevys, see. So anyway, does anybody have a Nissan? And I said, well, I got a Nissan. And they said, uh, I said, did it roll down the hill? <laughs> they said, no, 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 somebody backed into it. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, well, that's fine. I said, my, mo- my wife never liked that car anyway. <laughs> So, um, and we took a look at it, and um, I, needed, I needed a new door, and that happens, you know? It's not a big deal. And the person that hit it, I'm not going to ask him to pay for it. I'm going to ask him to come to church, you know? And that's all right. Because this is where we find hope, right? Otherwise, we just have stuff. Just have stuff. This uh, person that passed away um, was uh, fi- battled with cancer for about five years, and he was taken to the ER, and they weren't certain if he was going to make it. And, and after he came out of the ER, after um, he recovered some, he said, you know, I died. I went and saw God. And um, God said that I'm supposed to come back and tell everyone that he's real. Isn't that amazing? Supposed to come back and tell everyone that he's real. And um, he gave me some time to make amends. And so he spent uh, the next few years making amends with his family and friends and making sure every relationship was right and forgiving them. It was beautiful. And you know what he did? He picked up the scriptures and he started reading them. And he found hope there even though he knew what was inevitable because he knew that God was real. He knew Christ was real. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. What we will be has not yet been revealed, but what we do know is this, that when he is revealed, when Jesus is revealed, we will be like him, we will see him as he is. It says in 2 Corinthians 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 20, for in him, in Jesus, Every one of God's promises is a yes. Isn't that great? For this reason, we say amen to the glory of God. But it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, who has anointed us, who has given the first installment, that is, the Holy Spirit in your lives so that you might believe. And one day we'll stand in his presence and there there will be a joy beyond anything on this earth. Romans 8 says... If God is for us, who can be against us? And that's what he realized. There was no one to condemn him because God had called him back. And so he understood that he was more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. He knew that God was walking with him. Now, how does this play out? The truth is we need to know that we're forgiven. The strength of the gospel is seen in in what Martin Luther read or wrote to the, uh, in the freedom of the Christian, what you read up there on the screen earlier. That is that we, we struggle against ourselves. We, we wonder, what can we do? What can we do to make a better relationship with God? And when we start to do that, then we start to take ownership of our own faith and we say, no, this is my faith. This, this is mine. And I'm going to figure out exactly what God wants. Now, if you do that in your relationship, if I were to go home and say, you know what, this is my relationship, I'm going to figure out what we need to do to make it better. (laughs) How far would that go? (laughs) Probably right to the doghouse, huh? But in a relationship, you say, "Um, what can I do so that I might invest my time, that I might love this person even more deeply? than the first day that we were married, huh? And so he calls us to that. um, Martin Luther says the only thing, the one and only thing that is necessary in the Christian life for righteousness and freedom is the most holy word of God. That is his scripture itself. 
Because you know what? Every, every single one of his promises is yes in Christ. It says this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Martin Luther quotes this in, in, his, in his treatise to the freedom of the Christian. So if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so the word of God is rich. It lacks absolutely nothing since it gives us life itself. The word is life. It is truth. It is light and peace and righteousness, salvation, joy, liberty. It is wisdom, power, grace, glory, and every incalculable blessing. Do you believe it? Now here's how you can tell the gospel. The gospel always starts with because. And it's always about what God is doing in our lives. But the law is this. It always starts with if. And there's usually a then in there, you know? So if we were to read that second lesson again, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection of the dead, he says. He's trying to, he's striving. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the sharing of his sufferings, becoming like him in, in his death, if somehow. I may obtain. That's the law again. But he gets to the gospel. He says, because Christ has made me his own. And actually, in Paul's argument, you can start with that. Because Christ has made me his own, that means that it doesn't matter that I was a Hebrew born of Hebrews, that under the law I was a Pharisee, I was as a zeal, I was a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, I was blameless. All that means nothing because Christ has made me his own, and it's his righteousness that I depend upon. You are forgiven, he says to us. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. There's nothing you can do. He's done it all. And he calls you to himself so that you might know that love in a deeper level than you've ever known before. Don't worry about the other guy. It's always about us. And he calls each and every one of us, reminds us, I am the resurrection and the life. See what love the Father's given us. That we should be called children of God. He brings us alongside his beloved, his vineyard, that we might work for him. So be it, Lord. Amen. Let's